So you want to build a super cloner like the one you see here, but you don't have $326.93 plus shipping and handling? Well, I might be able to help you out with that one. It might not look as pretty, but I can tell you it will be just as effective. So stick around and let's see how we can do that. Here's some materials that might help you complete this project. There's a drill with a hole saw. We have a plastic tote with a lid. There's some neoprene pucks that are specifically used for cloning, but I'm sure you could find something else. Here's some aquarium bubble stones. There's a Sharpie. And we have a bubbler with some airline tubing. So we'll start by positioning the pucks on the lid and this will give us a spacing or a good idea of what spacing we need for our clones. And we'll just take the sharpie and mark out where those pucks are. Once we've got that figured out, we'll just cut them out with the hole saw. This actually proved to be a little bit more difficult than I thought. And so I actually ended up scrapping the original lid that was on the tote and I went with a styrofoam lid instead. So I just did the same process, but with the styrofoam. Overall, the styrofoam was just a lot easier to work with. It was a lot more forgiving and it fit the neoprene plugs quite well. Again, if you don't have uh, the neoprene plugs, you could maybe try to use the uh, styrofoam plugs and they work pretty much the same way. You can just cut them down the middle like that and place your cutting in between and it should hold it. Basically the same thing. So once your lid is cut and your holes are drilled and you've verified the fit, you can go ahead and drill a couple of lines coming in from the air pump and these will go to the air stones that you have in the bottom of the tote. And you want to set the air stones up so that they'll spray every clone and cutting that you have in the system. And once you're happy with the configuration, it should be good to go. You can also use, instead of the air pump, if you want to use an actual pump, there's micro sprinklers available if you want it to get fancy. But I'm counting on the air stones to create enough spray that cuttings will get wet. So just add some water and plug the air pump in and give it a test. And in this case, it looks like everything's working nicely, so the only thing we have to do next is to get some cuttings. So some of the cuttings I ended up selecting were blueberry bush, gooseberry, olive tree, and tomato. And I took all those cuttings back to the cloner. Uh, I ended up using a cloning solution. Uh, in this case it was a gel. You don't have to use this, you could even just use the water that's inside the cloner. You'll probably end up getting results. And I put them in the neoprene pucks and then put them into the cloner. Whenever you're dealing with cuttings it's always important to keep things humid until they've established roots. So figure out a way to do that. Here's a look at the pucks. As you can see from the underside they're getting wet. Uh, that's just from the bubbles from the bubbler spraying up. So the cuttings don't have to sit in the water, but you can see the bubbles and the spray from the back. And that's all you really need to get these things going. So here's a look at them all. And a few weeks later, there's some cuttings that fared a little more well than others did. But if we look at the roots, we'll be able to see how they did. Here's the blueberry dead, nothing much happened. The gooseberry, we're seeing roots, so you can definitely plant that. The olive tree, no roots. And here's the tomato, tons of roots. You'd have no problems cloning tomatoes in a system like this. That's about it. That's how you make your own cloner, guys. Hope you enjoyed it.